Hi, greetings and welcome back with another video in Roy's desk. You might be wondering what I'm doing with this box, right? Well, what's inside is this power resistors. If you have seen my previous videos, you will know that I will use this 8 ohms 100 watt resistors for testing the amplifier output power. And previously what I'll do is I will always clamp these resistors on a piece of heatsink and then I will test it. But then since I'm doing this a lot, I thought I'll just make a concrete solution for it. And I'll put everything in a box. So I got this box. I first thought I'll get some metal box, but I could not find anything. So I got this hard ABS plastic box. And then this heat sink. It's a pretty beefy heat sink. And the resistors. And also I got some switches, some connectors, this high quality terminals, and some spade connectors. So in this video, I will fix all of this inside this box and I will make a power testing unit for the amplifiers. So without wasting any further more time, let us get started. Okay, so I want this heatsink to be attached to this wall of this box. Like in here, so that I can get some room for the banana connectors to be here. And I will have the resistors connected like this. But I cannot place this resistor just in middle of this with equal gaps on both the sides because if I do that, I'll be having the holes in between the fins and that would make the tapping of the thread a bit hard. So I'll shift it a bit up so that I can get the holes in between the fins it will be easier for the tapping. So let us now drill some holes, tap it and fix this resistors on the heatsink. Okay, so threading is the most time consuming and the most frustrating thing in this process and I did mess up one of the holes while tapping the thread um, but that's not the end of the world. I think I am going to use this 2.5mm screw in here 
and I'm going to bolt it down to the resistor because it's just about bolting the things to the heatsink. It doesn't matter how we do it. All the other holes are fine and it's done. So next step would be hooking this heatsink onto this box in here like so and I'll have two holes, M4 holes in here. I'll tap these two places again. I'll have it fixed here and I'll also use one clamp to give some more extra support to this heatsink. The next step would be about fixing this banana jacks in here. So I did the markings for the holes. It's pretty easy actually. So you just stick out you just stick out these two plastic brackets. We'll have something like this and you just hold it to the place where you actually want to make the holes then you mark it draw straight lines across it and then put another one and again mark holes also measure this distance or here it should be same in both the sides so i'll drill the holes and come back okay so i made all the holes and slots required for it so these are these holes are for the banana jacks and i made these slots for the switches so yeah it fits perfectly in here i made the 4 mm holes in here and threaded it with m4 tapping bit to fix it in here and i'm also having this clamp in here to fix the heatsink and give some extra support oh and by the way i'll give the purchase link for all the things that i'm using here except this heatsink i sourced it from one local shop so now what is left is just finish all the connections and fittings so let us start that Now since all the fittings are done, we are remaining with only the connections. Now let us talk about the connection, it's very simple thing. You see, if we have one pair of resistor, each 8 ohms, 100 watts, and we connect one of the end in here and we can have a switch in the other end and we take the output from one of the resistors. Without the switch connected, we are going to get 8 ohms, 100 watts. But if we once connect the switch, then we are going to get, since both of the resistors are in parallel, we are going to get 4 ohms, 200 watts, since the power will also double itself. So this is one of the pair, same goes for the other pair also. So we have 4 ohms, 200 watts and also 4 ohms, 200 watts from the other end. And if we again parallel this two, we'll get 2 ohms, 400 watts. And if we put this two in series, we'll get 8 ohms, 400 watts. 
since there will be for a particular current there will be a particular voltage drop in this two and it will be shared so we are going to get 8 ohms 400 watts 2 ohms 400 watts 4 ohms 200 watts and 8 ohms 100 watts so these are the different possibilities that we can get from this system let us move into the connections now so i soldered all the wires as per the connection i have shown in the whiteboard so these two ends are connected these two ends goes to the switch if i switch it on it becomes 4 ohms if i switch it off it, it stays as 8 ohms and these are the banana jack terminals same goes for this side also now let us connect everything So all the connections are done let us check if it's working as expected or not so with the switch off 8 ohms and if i switch it on yeah we are getting 4 ohms with the switch off 8 ohms with the switch on 4 ohms yeah so it's working i mean yeah the connections are pretty easy nothing much here so i'll close the lid now So yeah, this is finished now. I, I maybe I will put some handle in here or maybe in the sides. Now I have a power resistor network for testing the amplifier boards. And if you want to see the testing of this board, please check out this video. And also the link will be there in the description. So that's it for this video. Please do like, share and subscribe and also press the bell notification. See you soon. Bye bye.